You're listening to the Vocabit Podcast, where I help students improve their vocabulary for the SAT, ACT, and life itself using my unique and research-backed story-based method. On this podcast, I'm sharing the best tips and tricks for a more enriched vocabulary and pain-free test day. Hello, and welcome to episode number 14 of the Vocabit Podcast. I'm Erica Abbott, a former English and history teacher, the author of the young adult novel Ahead of Her Time, and the founder of the eponymously named vocabulary company Vocabit. So before we dive into today's podcast, which I am so excited about, I want to share a quick little Vocabit update. The doors have officially closed on the founding member bonus for the Vocabit membership. Anyone who signed up through the end of the weekend was locked into that introductory rate for life, but you can still become a member at any time at vocabit.com. I'm constantly adding new vocabulary building material, and it's just such a goldmine for anyone trying to improve their vocabulary or English skills really painlessly. So I mentioned that I'm super excited about this episode because we are actually changing things up a little bit. For the next five episodes, we're going to do a little mini-series called Five Ways to Instantly Sound Smarter. And I'm going to teach you some of the most common mistakes that, for better or for worse, people get really judgy about. None of the podcasts are going to be like, to fix this, go read Tolstoy. No. I'm going to teach you how to fix these issues within the length of the several-minute podcast so you never again need to live in uncertainty over whether to use good or well less or fewer, or any of the other three. The series will start with the easiest ones and then become progressively more challenging. So even if you already know this one, I highly recommend tuning into all of them because I can almost guarantee that by the end of the series, you will learn some pretty advanced mistakes that people make. All right, let's dive in. The first way to instantly sound smarter is to master the difference between good and well. It's actually pretty simple once you break it down. I think the issue is just that most people haven't heard the rules in a while, so they end up using good for everything. So you'll hear things like, yeah, it was a really good game. I think I played pretty good last night. (coughs) Here's the rule. Good refers to nouns. Well refers to verbs. And let's just make that even simpler because I know that just the mention of nouns and verbs causes some people to break out in hives. So let's just say good refers to things. Well refers to things that people do. So it might have been a good game, but you didn't play good in it because it's impossible to play good. Playing is something that people do, so you played well in it. And I can already tell that I'm starting to lose people's attention because, you grammar. So let's liven this up with a little story about Miss Abbott getting royally embarrassed. When I moved to Italy when I was 17, I knew, like, no Italian. I knew how to say pizza and pasta And spaghetti, I guess. That's it. Pasta. I knew basically nothing else. And a couple months in, I went to Rome with some of my host sister's friends, all dudes. I don't know how I ended up on this trip or why she wasn't there, but there I was, on a train to Rome with a bunch of dudes. And forgive my fuzzy memory of this event, but keep in mind that I could only understand maybe 30% of what was going on. But basically, we were talking about someone, and I was trying to say that this person was a good guy. Now, in English, we have good and well. Good describes things. Well describes things that people do. And Italian has something similar, but they kind of have two forms of the word good. They have good for people and good for food. And I described this person as a ragazzo buono because, you know, buono means good. Buona fortuna, good luck. Ben is good. Mal is bad. But when I described this person as buono, These guys started laughing so hard, and I could not figure out why. And I was like, what? He's a good guy. He's a ragazzo buono. What's going on here? He's buono. He's good. And yeah, it turns out I was basically describing this guy as scrumptious. Oh, he's he's just a scrumptious guy. So awkward. And in that moment, I resolved never again to mix up my buonos and my bravos. Bravo is how you describe a person in Italian, by the way. Buono is for food. Bravo is for people. So he's a ragazzo bravo. And by extension, I resolved never to mix up my goods and wells again either. So let's just reiterate. Good describes things. Well describes things that people do. So it was a good book, it was a good game, it was a good gluten-free cookie. The author wrote that book well. I played well in that game. My aunt made that batch of gluten-free cookies very well. 
Good describes things. Well describes things that people do. Okay, last thing. One common place where people get really tripped up is in the rather frequent question, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Grammatically speaking, the correct way to respond is, I'm well. How are you? But here's the issue. I don't know why, but I mean, I see it. It can sound slightly pretentious to say, I'm well. How are you? It shouldn't. It's the grammatically correct response, but for some reason it does. It just sounds a little, you know, pretentious. You could say I'm fine, but then people think that maybe you're not doing very well. They're like, oh no, what's wrong? So if you want to say like you're, you know, you're good, but you want to be grammatically correct, what I do is I say I'm doing well instead of I'm well. And I found that by inserting that doing word, that verb right there, It makes your ear want to hear well so that it doesn't sound pretentious anymore. So the difference between I'm well, how are you? And I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Sounds a lot more informal and a lot less forced to me. It's a subtle change, but it gives you a way to obviate that kind of awkward response while still being grammatically correct. So that is tip number one for how to instantly sound smarter, know the difference between good and well, good describes things, well describes things that people do. If you want to continue boosting your vocabulary and English skills, be sure to check out the Vocabit membership at vocabit.com. Every episode, I share a podcast accompaniment that kind of adds on or gives you the text of the story. This week, I'll obviously share a little cheat sheet, but I'm also going to share the blog post that I wrote right after that Rome trip. And curiously, I went back and read it after recording this, and it fills in some of those details on like why I was on this trip. And it doesn't mention anything about Bono or Bravo, but it's a really fun read. And if you are a Vocabit member, you get your podcast accompaniment with extra good and well information, as well as that extra little story. Thank you so much. And I will see you on Thursday for tip number two on how to instantly sound smarter. 